Well, it's time, everyone. It's been about a week of me having it. I put 200 miles on it, and I am in love. That's quite an, an opening statement. So we'll tell you why. I ordered this uh, about a month and a half ago. Uh, early June. Early June. Uh, I don't know. June 7th, let's just say. I don't know. And uh, I just got it. So late July, just as they promised. It was exactly what the dealer promised. Um, my local dealer is Ball Equipment of Richmond. Um, they're super nice people. We dealt with them on a prior four-wheeler, and they were great. Um, they sold some stuff for us. I think they're a pretty decent dealership. They have good techs there. One of them rebuilt my uh, dirt bike and did a really good job. Um, they have guys that, are in, that have motocross background, snowmobiling background, um, you know, side-by-side -side background, four-wheeler background. They got good people there. Uh, and I think the sales guy was pretty knowledgeable during my ordering process. So we were communicating and, and just kind of BSing. And he said he was going riding. So he, and he went on a side-by-side -side trip with his family. So you're dealing with people who actually use the product. Um, I think he's got a Ranger uh, 1000 XP, if I'm not mistaken. So I ordered the Camo Premium 1000, not XP. Why? First reason is I couldn't order an XP, so that was kind of out of the question. What would I do different? Not worried about the XP part. I think that this is a wonderful unit. The only thing I wish that I had was AC. For a day like today, I'm sweating bullets and uh, it's hot. It's like 90 degrees. I don't know. A lot of humidity. I have no idea what it is. I'm not a, I'm not a meteorologist. It's hot. It's hot enough where it's... Take a break every once in a while. Suck down those water. See my Yeti in a water? Tell you what, those things are the best things going. I wish... You, Eddie, Yeti, if you're listening to this, please let me be a... Uh, uh, an ambassador for your product. I absolutely love your product. I use it all the time. I've been a user for probably as long as can be. And it really helped me quit drinking pop. Helped me control eating habits because I always have that on me with ice water in it. I think it's a wonderful product. Any of you guys who struggle with weight, I think it's a really good idea to have a water with you. And you, you're... Please don't take this like medical advice because I'm not a, a medical person. But my understanding is, is that your body sometimes mistakes thirst for hunger. So if you drink something before, if you're hungry, you drink something, you might find out that you are really just hungry and instead of just piling your stomach full of stuff that you're just going to have to process. So if that's true, if any of you guys are, you know, bodybuilders or uh, knowledgeable dietitians or uh, nutrition, sports doctor, medicine people, feel free to comment. If I'm wrong, I will hang my hat and say I'm sorry, but I think that's pretty accurate. I think it's a great, great product. So back to you guys who are subscribed know I go all over the place. When I ordered, I ordered the winch. Cape, the premium comes with the bumper that also has a snow, uh, snowplow mount. I ordered the roof. I ordered a glass windshield that doesn't tip out and a wiper. I figured it would be quieter. It'd be more secure and a glass rear, rear window. Don't think I ordered anything else. Everything else is rock stock. I think these tires are really nice. These are the factory. I think Carlisle makes them. Um, I have certainly not had any trouble. Yep, Carlisle. They were like, uh, they're 26 by 9 on the front. They had a, it was like a 912 or something like that. They're six ply tires. Um, hold on a second, guys. Designed in the USA. That's pretty cool. PTX2. There you go. PTX2. I think they're really nice tires. They're quiet on the road. They work well out here. I mean, I'm looking forward to trying them in the snow, but my experience is that tread pattern works well in the snow. I uh, haven't had it in deep mud, but I've had it in not deep mud, and it works amazing. I think they're nice tires, despite not being, you know, I know it's cool to have, like, Maxxis tire, or whatever name brand you guys are most associated with. I'm kind of a tire snob, I'm not going to lie, but Carlisle has been making tires a long time, and to be honest with you, I think they're really good tires. I was kind of anxious to change them. Not so much anymore. I really like them, and the rears are uh, 26 by 11 wide. So like I said, I did order the camo package, and this is a 1,000 single over a cam non-XP. I was initially concerned, and maybe some of you guys who are looking at buying one of these might be concerned that A, you're not going to get enough power, and B... The suspension might not be up to snuff. Now there is, I think it's an inch less ground clearance on a non-XP. As you can see, there's, I mean, I can put my phone up underneath that thing with a chainsaw and a bunch of other crap in it. Now, I have drug, there's a spot in my yard where I took out a bush and I didn't yet use a, um, a stump grinder to grind down where the 
top part. I really could just dig it, dig around and take a chainsaw and nip it off. Um, when I'm not in it, it doesn't, it doesn't scrape. When I am in it, or I'm sorry, when I'm in it alone, it doesn't scrape. When I, last night I, we went for a ride, my daughter and my better half were in there and it did scrape a little bit. I mean, you got two people and a baby and the baby is 30 pounds. I mean, you're starting to add up a decent bit. Now I would say that the rumors about the headlights are true. Stock headlights really, really suck. However, I would not opt for the factory LED ones. I was happy to get the halogens and pay the $38 or whatever it is for beam tax. Whew. Uh, let me tell you, they're worth it. They're absolutely phenomenal. It took me literally three minutes to replace them, and anybody who knows how to do headlights knows that that's the case. You literally take them out from the back. They're like a quarter turn or half turn or something like that. Take them out, plug the harness in that it comes with, and you have headlights. Went for a nighttime ride last night, and with the factory headlights, uh, you were you were out running your headlights at about 20 miles an hour, and you are really fretting to see if a deer might jump out of a, a ditch and run into you. When you have these things on and you have them on brights, I mean, 25, 30 miles an hour all day long, you're not overrunning your headlights. You can stop in time. You can see at least things that aren't obscured physically by, you know, a, a geometric sight line restriction. And there, I just went off on a technical technical name for it. But when there's physical things, like if there was a deer standing behind those trees right there, that would be a geometric sight line restriction. If you're looking over here, you can't, you can see. Now you can't see. And if there's a deer there, you can't see. And that's a geometric sight line restriction. Um, other than that, you're good to go. Now I installed the front rack, which I'm sure all of you have been like, whoa, what is that? Or maybe you are, I think it's cool. So the reason why I got this was I wanted to have something other than the back to carry things with, whether it be a deer, backpacks, guns, especially backpacks and guns, because you can strap them on the front and you can see them as you're riding and you know that you didn't lose them. When the things are in the back, you kind of got to trust that they're not going to fall out because when you're riding along and you're busy, you can't really see. So. And, of course, my bar oil is tipped over as usual. It, it is pretty bumpy in my defense, but um, I didn't want to ruin the, back, the cargo capacity by putting a back thing on. I might someday put a, a rear rack to protect the rear windshield because it's kind of expensive. Um, we'll see on that. And I may someday put a rear bumper on, again, to protect the muffler and whatever for backing into it at night. You know, you're off-roading. You also have a place to hang backup lights. Uh, I got these lock and ride little hooky doos. Um, I use them on my quad. They're really handy. You literally just drop them in, spin them, and they expand, and they get stuck in here, and then you can use them. Um, very, very nice feature. It dumps nicely. It has tie down. See the tie down pocket right here, or thing. Another tie down right here. There's one or all four corners. It works great. Um, the tailgate, I think, is the only thing that could use a little bit better quality. It's not bad. Sometimes that thing gets in the way. And it, whoopsies. That, that was me, not the thing. Sometimes it bumps right here because it doesn't retract all the way. The return spring might not be strong enough. Um, is what it is. It has a two-inch hitch receiver, which is good. It, it, it's either oversized or the cheaper, uh, not cheaper, but I got a two-inch ball um, with a, um, a pinnel attachment for using like on a lawnmower trailer for my lawnmower trailer for it. And it's kind of wiggly in there. So I had them in there and it was kind of wiggly and kind of annoying. So I uh, took it out and I just keep it inside of it now. So it breathes through these side panels is my understanding. I guess the uh, the XP breathes through, I think they said it got routed all the way underneath the, to the hood or something. But this model breathes the, uh, the transmission breather and the engine uh, intake. I'm assuming it's this one because your engine intake air filter canister is right there. I'm assuming that the snorkel comes up here on this side and then your transmission crosses over the other side, I think. I suppose I haven't looked into it too deep. I've trusted them that they did a nice job, so I didn't really worry about it. Um, the doors. Obviously, I ordered them when I ordered the unit, so I get them in camo. They work really well. They do lock. They're kind of more like a Jeep, where you kind of have to slam them. I mean, I wouldn't say slam them. I mean, if you're hunting, maybe you could... So you can go like that. If you're going to go hunting and you obviously don't want to bring this right to where you're hunting, you want to walk a good ways for obvious reasons. But if you did need to, or if you're recovering a deer, first of all, you could just leave the door ajar. And that way you're not making any noise getting in and out to go recover your deer. Um, that's an option. Keep it clean. Um, Hood's Camo 2, and this has a windshield wiper and the little sprayer nozzles right here. They had to, oopsie, sorry. They had to adjust this when I first got it because it um, 
it was pointing the wrong direction. So they adjusted it, no questions asked. It wasn't a big deal. Uh, I got the winch for obvious reasons. Winches are the most important thing you can have in an off-road vehicle. It sure makes it a lot easier when you don't have to worry about getting stuck. And I keep a couple toe straps, a couple clevises in the truck so I can extend out. I don't know how long that winch cable is. It's probably 50 feet or something. Then I have two more 20 foot ones. Oops. This is what you get when you don't lock the door. But it does have a bungee strap. This is actually a good, uh, a good test here. It will go over center if you really force it to. But um, you got a bungee strap here. Um, the premium seats are excellent. They have some bolstering. Honestly, I mean, I've driven 200 miles in this, and I've only had it a week. And I'd say every ride has been... Well, I've driven 200 miles, and I'm pretty sure the machine only has 11 hours. So you can do the math. I think the average is something like 20-something. It's going pretty quick. So I never have gotten out here with a hurt back or a hurt backside or a hurt, you know, whatever. It's a very comfortable machine. Seatbelts could be a tad longer if you're a tall and bigger guy. Um, not a big deal. Um, the dealer didn't tell me this, but I'll forward this to you guys. You can obviously get a seatbelt defeat thing, which is fine. But what I saw the dealer doing when they brought it back in to refill my... Um, it has a heater, and when they installed it, they didn't turn the heater on to purge the coolant into the heater. And so when I got it, the coolant level in the bottle was kind of low. So they topped it off. Um, he just took the middle seat and hooked it to the main seat, and you have yourself a defeated seatbelt. Now, please don't take this the wrong way. I am a huge fan of seatbelts. I believe you should always use them in a vehicle, use them on the road, use them on the trail. When I'm going slow and I'm looking around and make sure I'm not going to hit anything, I don't like a seatbelt holding me into where I can't jerk my head around and turn my back and or turn my neck and look this direction and whatever. I don't like it when I'm off-roading. No matter what vehicle I'm in, I prefer to be unseatbelted on off-road. So that's just my choice. But I don't know if I've ever really seen people do this, and it's pretty slick and it's pretty easy to deal with. Instead of putting that thing behind your back, and if you want to put your seatbelt on, you really quickly just unclick it, obviously, and take your seatbelt and put it in, you're good to go. You don't have to get up and screw around with it. Seems pretty easy. It has a, um, it has a, uh, what the heck are those called? Battery tender port. I have my cell phone charger in here. It doesn't have AC, but you can turn it to cold, obviously. And all that means is obviously you're not using the heat from the machine to warm you when you're just trying to get the fan. Fan works really well. This thing's heater is pretty awesome. I don't think we're going to have any trouble with it in the wintertime. It's a little bit toasty right now, especially three wide. It's really not too bad if you're alone or if you had two people, but if you have your child next to you, you know, your third third row has your child in it. Um, it's kind of, um, it's kind of hot. So keep that in mind. Then again, in Michigan, we really don't have too long of hot part portions of the summer. It's really not too bad. So I put on the rigid LEDs because I like light bars and light pods. This, uh, this front rack has these slots, I will probably end up putting another light bar in because it just kind of, I've always been kind of a light bar guy. Hate me if you want to. I've always liked light bars. That winch has a magnetic stop to it. So when you reel it in, it doesn't over tension the cable. It stops once it gets fully in, which is pretty sweet. Um, as for this rack, the reason why I went with it, a little bit of a backstory. When I was finally deciding on I was going to get a side-by-side, -side, I was shopping at Cabela's and Ohio in, uh, well, I'll think of the name. It's that Cabela's uh, west of Toledo and south of Good Ways from the border, little ways. Uh, Maumee, Maumee, Ohio. And they had a duck version, a duck hunting version of their tracker machine. And it was camo, and it had a top rack, so you can put decoys on the top and all kinds of crap up there. It had a front rack, and I thought that was the bee's knees. Now, I don't know if I'm going to do a top rack for this, because I really do like to use the back for the chainsaws and whatever. But this front rack, like I stated, you could put a tent up here. You could put, you know, your backpack. You could put your strap a couple guns up there, probably three or four guns if you really wanted to. You could get a whole party of your buddies, go back to your favorite duck hole and strap all your guns in the front and buddies can ride in back and go on with your day. I didn't want to compromise the back, especially so I could have a cooler in the back. I didn't want to compromise the little space, so I wanted to be able to put things up front. And also things that might be valuable so I can see them physically while I'm using the machine. Um, so that's why I got the front rack. And this one is the OEM Polaris one. It bolts right into and ignore the, it's either duck poop or mud. I mean, I mean, um, poop or mud this bolts directly into the bumper so it ties the bumper itself 
up through here directly into the roll cage. These two are, looks like 10.9 bolts. They're pretty healthy bolts. Yep, they're 10.9s. They're real, real, real healthy bolts. This is cross bolted into the um, roll cage. So you literally tie your front bumper to your unit and it is rock solid. I mean, I'm just grabbing the rack right now and pulling out. These have basically the lock and ride set up where you tip this up and the little rubber plungers in here and it uh, expands and holds that in. So this can flip up, number one. And also, this is just kind of, it's not really a hinge, it's just like trapped in here. So you can physically remove this. So if you want to go trail riding and you didn't even want to bring this, you can just take it off, extra weight off your front end. Um, and if you need to get into your front bumper, or I'm sorry, your front under hood, you can pull your two tabs, take this thing off first, and then get into here. No problems at all. Um, I think that it provides a lot of support. It ties the bumper. Now, I really think the only way you're going to screw this up is if you hit something out on this edge. Because this is strong, but unsupported. So, I do believe they make things that bolt into here and connect somewhere. I don't necessarily mind looking into that, but to be honest with you, I think this will do fine. I'm a pretty careful user of things. So... Hopefully I covered a lot of it. Now, let me get to the main point of, um, I kind of foreshadowed with this, and I think this is the most important part of this machine, is not being able to get the XP. Now, the only thing I would do over again is if there would have been an opportunity for me to order a North Star so I could get air conditioning, I would have taken that opportunity. The dealer didn't have any order slots for the North Star, and it is what it is. Now, based upon the utility of this machine, I would consider down the road keeping this for my hunting and this kind of uses here. And if we um, got more into using it to actually access hunting on state land or whatever, I'd consider getting a four-door model with uh, AC indoors. And the same thing, just a four-door model because it is a little tight in the three-person cab. The utility of this is much like having a regular cab pickup truck, um, except it's a lot smaller. You can see the overall width is very very small and you can see too that the Polaris doors don't stick out as far as a Can-Am. You can look on the website and see the Can-Am doors stick out a long ways on the Defender. Uh, this is also made in the in uh, USA and in, uh, in uh, Minnesota and that's one of the bigger reasons that I chose this uh, this machine. I've had good luck with Polaris. Um, I have nothing against Can-Am. I really like their snowmobiles. Skidoo is a, a leader and they have been for eons. I have absolutely no problem with Can-Am, and by no means am I putting down a Can-Am. However, to me, my I'm, I'm happy to say that this was built in Minnesota, and it was shipped from Minnesota, and I am proud to have supported those people that work up in Minnesota building these units, uh, as opposed to buying the Defender, which is specifically made in Mexico, where their other brands are made in the United States and Canada, uh, as well as some made in Scandinavian countries, like the... Uh, oh, gosh, what's the the skidoo of it's like Norway or Finland or something there's a I can't links links um I believe those are made over there and they're sold over there and now they're importing them here because they have some pretty cool models this is a really nice machine the power is a lot this thing's got a lot of power zero to 30 it's pretty nasty 40 to 50 well 30 to 40 it's still pretty pretty good 40 to 50, it slows down a little bit. And once you get over 50, you're um, you're not accelerating as fast as... The thing is, my calibration, too, is... First of all, my friend's parents have a 900 XP uh, Ranger. And this is, I would say, very, very comparable. If not... I think it's... This thing holds speed really, really well. I, I think that that's the biggest difference between, like, a 900 XP, which has the dual over a cam 900 motor... Um, and this, this thing holds speed extremely well. It's got a ton of mid-range torque. Where the, How this thing is clutched, you can hold 35 miles an hour without any effort. 40, you know, whatever. I cruise a lot between 27 and 35, and the thing just wants to go faster. Like, you almost have to, like, especially at night when you're just trying to be responsible or you're trying to make sure your kid can see the wild, wildlife you're driving by, you're trying to keep it at 22, 23 miles an hour. You got to kind of mentally work at it. The thing just wants to go faster. So... It's got a ton of power. You're not lacking on power. It's torque and low. I don't think you could use any more power if you're just crawling around doing tight stuff. This thing's turning radius is absolutely incredible. The way this thing turns, I think, is the major sale point for this unit. 
the amount of the power to weight ratio of what you have here between recovering trees out of ditches or deer out of ditches with the winch, you have the back to carry whether it's chainsaws, fuel, bring logs out of the woods, tow trailers, you have a two inch receiver, you have the front rack on this model, you have heat so you can stay warm, on a, a North Star you have AC, and like I said, I think that that is a huge value add. I wish that I would have been able to get that, um, but it's only really useful for about six weeks out of the year here in Michigan. After that, the wind blowing over your hand out the window is more than enough. We have a really pretty climate, but right now it's muggy, it's hot, um, and also too, our bodies are used to being, uh, you know, comfortable in 30 degrees here in Michigan. We Michiganders are kind of weird. We go out and play when it's, you know, we think it's warm when it's 40 degrees out when it comes spring. I mean, it's just a different kind of, uh, when we go to Florida, you should see how Michiganders behave in Florida. Just, oh, we're just dying. Same with Texas. Oh, uh, Virginia is hot too. And then they come here and my buddy lives, has lived in Texas for crap, five, six years now. And he came to Michigan. He said he was cold and he was wearing jeans and a hoodie. I mean, he used to be from here. It's amazing how quickly your body readapts to your to your climate. But he's an oil, oil field uh, worker down in uh, a really remote part of Texas. So shout out to you, buddy. It was great to see you. I'm glad you came up. If you're uh, if you're watching this, I appreciate it if you did. Um, yeah. So I think that all in all, what this thing does, I think that it hits really high on the power to weight ratio scale. Um, in your cost. Uh, it, it's going to be different everywhere, so I'm not going to get into costs. A lot of YouTubers say that, that same thing, like it could be, it's going to change at any point. Um, the base price for this, before you add in the doors and the windows and the windshield and all that stuff, that I honestly think is a huge value add um, and worth it every single day of the week. I mean, there's um, there's a lot of people who waste a lot more money than it was to update to the upgrade to the doors, the windows, than the, uh, the back window and the windshield. Um, this is crank window, by the way, I did not for the electric window. And I, I am really happy with that option. I like crank windows. Um, and the, the front grill thing, I mean, was there, there's some people who have a bigger bar tab than that front grill cover the, um, you know, the rack on the front and they have a bigger bar, a bar tab. And there's a lot of people who take their family out at a fancy steak restaurant and spend way more than just that thing was. So I don't feel too bad about having that. Again, the lights weren't a crazy amount uh, I wired that in not using the players bus bar because I wanted to be able to run those lights in the event that there was something wrong with either if I was gutting a deer I could use the lights or um, if for some reason the the bus bar failed or something or the headlights failed I would have these run directly to the battery on a flip switch so um, I'm using the, the the rigid wiring kit that came with it and so far it's working fine um, I do kind of prefer to run it like that so that you have the flexibility of controlling your own uh, your own lights without having to worry about the power system on the on the unit and also too so you're not running the ecu and the fuel pump and all that stuff if you just wanted to light a trail for instance if you're dragging a deer out of the woods or you were gutting a deer or, or um you know if you were skinning a deer if you wanted to do that um or quarter you know processing a deer we'll just put it that way if you are doing that those lights are going to be a huge hugely handy thing and they bolt right to that polaris factory bumper has a bunch of different slots for that so that's really really slick and they fit in there quite well i am going to revisit the mounting i tried to keep the wires a little more taut up i need to cut that line because i forgot to do it but these guys fit right in here with plenty of room to spare and i can basically fit my fingers i have pretty big fingers um no worries and these you can see that there's some more holes in here this is a big slot that this goes in so you could move them in i wanted to keep them wide um i think that's a really nice setup this machine has two cup holders on top you can see my yeti and the uh um the empty water bottle there there's two more directly below them under the middle seat and then one on each side so you have six cup holders in this thing uh there's three positions and six cup holders not really sure you can go wrong with that uh you know great for a day on on the trail if you want to bring a bunch of gatorades and water you could each i mean you could have a gatorade and water for each of your passengers in different locations so um I think that's really a nice feature. The windshield wiper works really, really well. I'm glad I got that. And the glass windshield really prevents having the scratches that you get with a um, a, a plastic windshield. They scratch up really fast. It's it's uh, it's too bad how quickly those guys scratch up. The glass windshield works, in my opinion, a lot better. I think it's way worth, way, way, way worth it. Um, what else am I forgetting here? Um, 
The engine, like I said, has plenty of bottom end, has plenty of mid-range. I think top end was intentionally sacrificed a little bit for having the tractability that it has. Um, it has good power output competitive with the 900 XP, and my assumption is having the more displacement and less complicated head and also less RPM that you're spinning. This thing really tops at about 61, 6200 RPM, and if I'm not mistaken, the XP gets up over 8500 RPM or something. So the wear and tear on the motor is going to be a lot higher on that unit, in my opinion. By no means am I knocking you guys with XPs. I'm sure they're awesome. If I love this thing as much as I do, I'm sure that I'd love having that more, but I'm not sure the value add to me was worth it. I would rather get another unit. If I was going to use a unit for sport, I would buy the new, um, the Polaris, um, the Razor Pro or an X3 all day long and have two units. It's, um, obviously that's a way more expensive way to go, but anytime you're trying to have one dog do two tricks, you're, um, you're, you're working it a little hard doing that. So you go out and beat on it for the weekend. Then you come out here, you want to work on your property and you have something break when you're back here, just trying to get some work done. I'd rather keep this thing a work machine and go trail riding with it. And then have something, if I really, if I had in the future, if I built a track or if I had more time to go up a trail ride, I would definitely consider getting a real, or, um, a real full sport side-by-side, -side, especially when they come out with, um, either automatic transmissions or manual transmissions with a, you know, a dual clutch setup or anything other than CVTs are nice, but they have a real problem with high horsepower because the heat, heat rejection is a huge issue. And that's something that I think having lower output and having a more controlled torque and horsepower curve and not as much of a rowdy machine, I think that this thing will be very reliable, both engine and transmission wise. My understanding is, and I need to research this more, is that this unit in 2019, I think it was 2019 when the 1000 non, or the 1000 non XP got updated with the, a stronger diff. And I'm not sure it's lineage, but my understanding is that it got updated with a stronger diff. And my understanding is in 2022, which this is a 2022, is they went away from a reverse chain and went to a gear to gear reverse. And it does sound like that. You can kind of hear the gear whir when you get going in reverse. I think that that's the case. I need to research it a little bit more. It's hard to find some definitive answers. I would like to find an exploded view or something. My understanding is that's the case. If I'm wrong, so be it. But it sounds, from what I've understood, I think that that's an upgrade that, that, that this has, and I'm happy to have that. I think that it'll be a good, uh, a more reliable setup. It sounds like there are some problems with reverse chains when you're beating on them off-road. Um, I didn't know that. So I know a lot of people who have Rangers and have high miles on them, and I've never heard them say anything about reverse chains. So take that for a grain of salt. Maybe people are using them a little beyond their expected use. Um, perhaps if you're going that deep in mud, you might want to look at the um, high lifter version, which I'm sure is a pretty amazing machine. But I think that the, the lower ride height on this, I'm not sure I'd want higher ride height. And the frame, as far as I know, is the same for an XP in this one, but you're simply getting lower ride height. Um, so... They're lifting it, which I don't think would help me on my property because I already dragged the roof on things, not hard things, just some branches and stuff. So I'm not sure that I really want the suspension of the XP, which is why I was happy to get the non-XP. Um, you can always pay aftermarket to get um, High Lifter or many other brands, Arch Day Arms, and Arch Day Arms are, are, are nice. The thing is, is that I don't think I've ever caught anything on these A-Arms, and I've been all over this property now, and I think without some general intelligence of wheeling and watching what you're doing and checking you know streams before you bomb through them and just general intelligence you can make something like this work very very well for you take you all over the place have just as much fun and save the eighteen hundred dollars or whatever it is to upgrade to the to the xp and like i said i'm not sure that the higher ride height would really help me that's one one of my biggest complaints with side by sides in general is they seem to want to jack them up where you have a huge amount of ground clearance except for the thing is just sitting up in the air and there's there's very little droop travel and droop travel is extremely important when you're off-roading you want to drop that tire into a into a hole so that it can maintain traction if you're just scooting over top of things the tire ends up getting air off the ground and you obviously don't have any contact you can't brake you can't turn you don't have any uh, lateral control you really want to have a lot of droop travel and from what i see with side by sides kind of the thing to do these days is they max out the droop to get the most amount of ground clearance and pretend that that's better in my opinion it's not so i'm happy with this setup um i do believe it has an inch less total travel and an inch less ground clearance um i'm very very happy with the ride 
And by the way, I'm trying to make this an extremely comprehensive review because I put a lot of thought into when I bought this. So you guys are like, oh my God, it's 30 minutes long. Uh, I'm trying to give you as much thought as I can because I've had a lot of time to think about my buying choices, why I bought it, and uh, when I went ahead and got it. So, and now that I've been using it, I've been able to review my thoughts on it because I kind of kept them in the back of my head and I've been kind of mentally working on this video for a while. So I know it's long. Try and give you a comprehensive review because when you're spending this much money, you need to be able to get something that is something you're really going to be proud of. Um, and I'm extremely proud of this unit. I absolutely love it. Um, it is fully insured and, and insurance was not a, um, an off-putting um, deal. I have a good driving record. I haven't gotten tickets in five, six years. Uh, never had an accident. Um, so, uh, yeah, it really wasn't expensive to insure it in full, um, including accessories. So, um, it's not a super big burden to own. And I think that the, like I said, the power to weight ratio, what this thing gets you with how much you can do with a small package that can turn just incredibly tight. It's wild how tight this machine turns. Um, and I'll, I'll make a video showing that I promise. Um, so I'm trying to alleviate some of the concerns because I certainly had some second guesses. Excuse me. Like, uh, you know, the biggest thing was, well, having a power. Yes, it does. We can ride around with a substantial payload of two people, a baby, and crap in the back and not have any uh, any issues carrying 35, 40 miles an hour. And really, when you have a baby, baby in the car, I mean, you could probably do 50 with a baby in the car, but I choose not to. I mean, really, I'd like to keep it between 27 and like 33 at most. And usually we want Ellie to be able to see you know, nature and things like that's the whole point of going on rides. So we're going, you know, 21 to 24, you know, miles an hour or something under 25. I did, uh, you basically get to go between 60 and 65 miles and a half tank approximately. At least that's what I found out so far. In the last tank of fuel, I averaged 17.9 miles a gallon. So not too shabby. You can really use this thing to drive around and enjoy whether it's your hunting property, your farm, um, back roads to explore go to tracking in it instead of having a, a vehicle that's specialized you can just take this um without it being a uh, a major concern i i haven't really gone even below half tank uh simply because i i live close to a gas station that has um rec 90 so i can i run rec 90 in this i'm sure I, I know it'll run when i first bought it i put premium in it i figured the break-in miles least chance of having detonation or something i actually need to look at the handbook they because this is the lower output model it might only need to have um 87 but i've been running rec 90 to keep the ethanol out of it um and i do run enough fuel through it where probably it's not too big of an issue um this thing doesn't sit very much today i'll probably put you know 40 miles on it or something like that um so i've gotten a lot of use out of it hopefully it's with us for a long time i'm really proud of it and uh hopefully i've helped if any of you guys are going through a buying process, I want to point one, one more thing out too. I, you might be asking why I went this route versus an, another route, a different brand. Um, I'm not necessarily, like I said, I, I do really like Can-Am. The biggest reason I didn't buy a Can-Am was really the doors sticking out as far as they do. Do not like that um, because I do scrape these doors on, you know, whether it's brushes, brush and sticks and whatever. And the least amount of contact you can have with things is obviously better. So I opted for, that was one of the biggest reasons was the door fit. The other biggest reason was the Polaris, um, you know, their, their four-wheel drive system. I think they call it on-demand four-wheel drive. It's not a gimmick. That front differential, the way it smoothly locks in and always is there to bring you through things is no joke. They are, they are cut way above the competition and now only really rivaled by the Can-Am uh, Smart Lock, which is the, basically the competitor to this. They had Visco Lock before. That required some wheel rotations to lock in their front diff. And, I mean, it worked fine. As you, as you probably know, there's lots of people who have had a lot of success with it and this and that. I've had a lot of success with this design. The way it locks in is just so smooth. Um, the turf mode in this works really, really well. So that was a requirement. I wanted to have turf mode so I don't tear up my yard. And I will say, even with these, uh, you know, big lug mud terrain tires, doesn't tear up my yard. Um, I say mud terrain loose meat. You guys know what I mean. Uh, big treads on the tires. I don't tear up my yard with it in open diff. Uh, when it locks, it's locked, you know, thoroughly. It's locked. Um, so you have the front locked quickly when it needs to engage and your rear locks up with the switch. I think that that was a huge buying decision. Um, I, I tried to keep an open mind 
because there is a lot less dollar value machines that have four wheels and have a bed and have a tip bed. Uh, not all of them have a body, and the body was obviously a huge concern. Like I said, the doors were a huge purchasing decision to opt for the ones that don't stick out a mile. Um, so I think that that was a huge win for the players. Um, other brands, I didn't consider them. I, if I'm not mistaken, the Honda Pioneer has like their automatic transmission um, like they have in other models. And by no means do I think that it's bad. It's just that I don't have a local uh, Honda dealer around here. And they don't have an equivalent front-end locking setup that is even competitive with this. So that kind of knocked that out right away. Now, cheaper brands, you could just tell right away the fit and finish difference, the quality materials, the ride, the everything about a Can-Am and a Polaris is far better than, uh, we'll just say cheaper units, okay? You get what you pay for in terms of the chassis, in terms of the body interior, um, no, the body in the interior, the, the bed functionality, the... Um, coming with a two inch hitch, the factory bumper. There's the Can-Am and Polaris, in my opinion, they're on a different realm. They have, they, the price is high because you're getting a great four wheel drive system, a well-tuned suspension and a really high quality total vehicle package. I really wasn't considering any other models. I think that the tracker had an influence on me wanting to get a side-by-side, -side, but to be honest with you, as soon as I sat in one and kind of looked underneath it and felt around it was not something I was going to buy. So take that for what you will. By no means am I hating on anything you have. Um, that's not my intention on this channel. This is more directed toward people who are who are shopping. Pay careful attention to what you're getting for really three quarters of the price. You're not paying half. You're not paying, you know, a quarter. That's for sure. You're paying basically three somewhere between half and three quarters of the price of just getting the... If you look online at the MSRP of this, of these, I think it's like 17.3 or something like that. You can't get into a tracker for 13 or 12. It's not like you're paying eight or nine. You can't even get a four wheeler for that. So I'm just trying to caution, pay attention to what you're getting because I, I you're paying more for whether you're a Can-Am guy or a Polaris, but you're getting a phenomenal machine. Um, off-road, on-road, in the ditches, in the snow, in mud, on trails. These are amazing pieces of equipment, and you are you generally hear the same things. Now, obviously, there's room for a failure to happen. You can always break something. You could have a fire because you had a fuel connector come off. You know, you could install some electrical equipment improperly and have a, uh, an electrical fire. Like, there's things that happen. By no means am I saying that Polaris is never fail or never have, you know, a build quality issue where an engine blows up early or something weird. Things like that happen. can have it happen. They all have it happen. When you're talking about two units that were built correctly and were assembled correctly, they are really, really good units. And I think that they're cut above the rest. And there's some features of, like, the Honda and the Articat and others that didn't appeal to me. Their size, their weird rear seat arrangement. The Honda has that semi-rear seat thing. It's just... It wasn't my cup of tea, so I went this route because of the reasons I just stated, basically what I'm getting at. So if you're going through the same buying process and perhaps having similar wonderment or, uh, you know, second-guessing yourself, um, like I said, that's why I made this video. It's now 40 minutes long. I've been talking for 40 minutes straight. Um, as a business major, it's kind of something that's part of my life, is talking. So uh, I have no problem with that. Hopefully I was informative and helped you guys. If anybody has any specific questions or review questions, please feel free to comment. Um, post up what machine you have and if you had good success with it, we can kind of make it like a buyer's guide. You know, I have absolutely no problem with that. I'm not going to shun you because you bought a Can-Am or because you bought a Honda Pioneer or because you bought a whatever, Arctic Cat, something or other. I don't care what it is. Feel free to comment. Feel free to interject why you bought your machine it might help somebody else out too um and also um if what i was getting at was if you have any specific things that you want videoed reviewed shown whatever comment on here and i'll make those videos to help you guys out i try and be 
If you look back in previous videos, I've had a lot of good people ask some really good questions, and I did my very best to answer them to the best of my ability, and I had a lot of fun doing it, so please keep it up. Um, I really appreciate that. Please remember to like, please remember to subscribe, and there'll be plenty more side-by-side -side related content. Right now, it's kind of work time. Trail riding is... Uh, gonna be coming here real quick. So um, I really miss getting on the trail and that's why I got this machine was to both work and play. So um, stay tuned for that. Please, like I said, like and subscribe. It helps me out a ton. Please comment. I don't care if you just say hello, have a nice day, you know, that kind of thing. Comment, whatever you, you know, I, I prefer constructive things. Constructive things are good. Um, you know, help out your fellow off-roader or outdoor enthusiast and uh, be supportive and all that fun stuff. So um, take care of uh, yourselves, everyone. Thank you for watching.